One of the key sectors taking a hit from the U.S.-China trade war is tourism. Chinese visits to America fell by almost 6 percent last year, the first drop since 2003, and the number of Chinese visiting the United States is expected to drop by 2 million next year. According to Tourism Economics, the drop in Chinese tourists could cost the U.S. as much as $11 billion. That's because Chinese travelers spend, on average, almost 6,000 U.S. dollars during the course of their trip. So if visits continue to decline, the cost to major tourist cities could, could quickly add up. Lee Abamonte is a travel expert who has uh, visited every single country in the world. He joins me via Skype from New York. Lee, first of all, congratulations. The fact that you've seen every country in the world, rather impressive. I want to begin with the drop of Chinese tourists to the United States. The numbers are pretty significant. Is that a trend that you think is going to continue? Well, I think it might continue as long as uh, the current trade war goes on. Um, Chinese tourists are still traveling. They're just not traveling to the United States as much as they used to. So we're seeing a drop in actual dollars spent because Chinese tourists spend more than just about any other group of tourists. So, uh, I mean, it's hard to say where this is going to go, but I think as long as uh, the current situation stays as is or gets worse, I think it's going to continue or get worse. So the Chinese tourists are not coming to the United States as much. Where are they going? I think they're, uh, I go to Europe a lot and I see a heck of a lot of to uh, Chinese tourists in, uh, in Europe. So they love, they love France, they love Italy, uh, they love the Mediterranean, and uh, they love to shop. There's a lot of great shopping out there. They love sightseeing. There's a lot of sightseeing there. And uh, there's a reason that those countries get the most tourists in the world. And I think that's just going to continue to grow. And how popular is China, Asian continent, as a tourist destination? Have you seen any changes or trends there? Well, I think that Asia is always a destination for Americans that uh, is a place you want to go, but don't necessarily think to go because people think it's such a daunting uh, destination so far. I'm actually heading to China in two weeks, and I can't wait to go. Um, but that's me. Uh, I think that for most Americans, people see China through... Uh, the perception that you get on television and in the media. And if you haven't been to China, you don't know how much it has to offer. So I think uh, as long as the current situation stays as is, I think it's going to be an inverse relationship uh, with tourism. And what are tourists these days, uh, Lee, looking for? Is it good food? Is it culture? Is it entertainment? Well, I think it's a little bit of everything. I think uh, the buzzword is experiential tourism these days. Uh, I know for me, it's always been like that, but I th feel like that's really catching on. I mean, people realize um, that they can go, you know, shopping at some of these fancy uh, clothes stores in just about any city in the world. So why not experience uh, whether it's local culture or uh, nature or whatever it might be that's unique to a particular place or city or region that you're visiting and actually experience it. You don't have to stay in a five-star hotel. You can go glamping or camping or, or stay in an uh, independent hotel. And I think that's really catching on around the world, uh, certainly in America, I know it is. And tell me two top destinations for you. I know it's going to be hard. <laughs> it's, uh, it's always difficult when, you, when you've been to as many places as I can. But I always say if it weren't so far, I would consider living in either Australia, New Zealand, Argentina, or South Africa. The four Southern Hemisphere countries I just think are fantastic. Wonderful. We'll leave it there. Lee Abamonte, thank you.